a leading Protestant scholar or a Protestant evangelist. His name was Pat Roberts, and he wrote a book called The New World Order. And uh, he said, look, the New World Order is coming. And here is the basis of unity for all Christians. Here's the basis of unity for Catholics. Here's the basis of unity that will bring God's favor on the nation. And uh, here's what Pat Robertson said. The next obligation that a citizen of God's world, so he's saying we're citizens of God's new world order, owes is to himself, remember the Sabbath day, he believed that was Sunday, to keep it holy, is a command for the personal benefit of each citizen. So here's what he's saying. In the new world order, that there should be laws passed to protect the benefit of each citizen. He goes on, higher civilizations. So he's saying, unless you have this new world order, where you have church and state united, and you're able to legislate religious morality. Higher civilizations rise when people can rest and draw inspiration from God. Laws in America that mandated a day of rest, that Sunday laws, have been nullified as a violation of separation of church and state. Now what does he say? This is an outright insult to God and his plan. So he said to take these Sunday laws off our books is an outright insult to God and his plan. Only those policies that can be shown to have clearly secular purpose are recognized. And he's saying, if we're gonna live in the new world order, if America's gonna be blessed, we need to get back to this common day of rest and worship. Uh, now the Pope chimed in on this, and he wrote a very famous encyclical called uh, Laudato Si of the uh, Holy Father Francis on the care for our common home. Now this is really an interesting encyclical. So according to the Pope, our common home is, of course, planet Earth. And he's saying, how can we care for it? And what he's really urging here is that all humanity go back to Sunday as a day of rest and worship. He says, Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, of course, it's not the Jewish Sabbath, it's Jesus' Sabbath, is meant to be a day which heals our relationships with God, with ourselves, and with others, and the world. So his big argument is, we need Sunday to heal relationships with God, with ourselves, and with the world. So you can see at a time of crisis, with Protestant leaders, Catholic leaders, and with the erosion of church and state we see happening in America, that Sunday could be the vehicle very easily, like it was in the past. The Pope goes on. Sunday is the day of resurrection, the first day. We, of course, celebrate the resurrection by baptism. We are immersed, and we come up out of the water to be resurrected newness of life. So baptism is the symbol of resurrection, certainly not Sunday. Sunday is the day of resurrection, the first day of the new creation, whose first fruits are the Lord's risen humanity, the pledge of the final transfiguration of all created reality. It also proclaims man's eternal rest in God. In this way, Christian spirituality incorporates the value of relaxation and festivity. These are the two words I want you to see. Here is a commonality. You have the commonality in Protestant authors. You have the commonality in Supreme Court decision actions. You have the commonality in the uh, writings of the Pope of Rome. It is this, that for the good of mankind, to preserve mankind, what we need is a day that will bring us together to bring the blessing of God upon humanity, of relaxation and festivity. But what happens to the minorities? One of the most powerful arguments ever written to argue against this philosophy came out by the editor of the St. Louis Dispatch, October 29, 1991. And it was just at the time of the 200th anniversary of America in 1996. And he says, as the second century of the Bill of Rights draws to a close. So this is written toward the end of the 20th century. The Supreme Court is redefining what religious liberty will mean in the third century. In other words, redefining what the religious liberty would mean in the 21st century, the time that we're now living. And the St. Louis Dispatch goes on to say, broadly, the court's new approach helps conventional religions. In other words, if you worship on Sunday, Catholics worship on Sunday, Protestants worship on Sunday, if you're part of the conventional religions, you're going to be happy with this. But then he says, while hurting unconventional ones. In other words, if you're part of the minority, if you are moved by your conscience to keep the seventh-day Sabbath, you ought to be really nervous 
about the possibility in prophecy that is clearly predicted that these rights will indeed be eroded. You see, in the Bible, revival never comes by legislation being passed. In the Bible, it's not the laws of nations that create revival. It's not national law that creates righteousness. It is Jesus Christ in the hearts of human beings Amen. that makes them pure and honest and ethical. Amen. If you look at history, when church and state unite, they oppress the minorities. If we want revival, we do not look to the Supreme Court. We look to the Supreme Court of the universe. Amen. If we want revival, we do not look at legislation coming out of Washington or anyplace else. We look at the Word of God. Amen. If we want revival, we look deeply within our own hearts. Second Chronicles chapter 7. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and I'll heal their land. Amen. God says to you and me, the key to revival is to get on our knees. The key to revival is broken heartedness before God. The key to revival is say, Jesus, what do you want me to do? Amen. Jesus, whatever you want me to do, if you want me to step out from the majority and worship with the minority, the minority was saved in the days of Noah. The only people saved were those that went into the ark. The majority was lost. The majority in the days of Jesus cried, and crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. But it was a minority that went out and changed the world. And again tonight, God is calling for a godly minority. Amen. All revival begins in our hearts. And Jesus lights a flame in our hearts. And we travel from nation. He sends us out to our friends, to our neighbors, to nations. You see, there are two revivals in the last days. The true and the false. The false is based on the teachings of man. The false is based on signs and miraculous wonders. The false is based on human tradition. The false is based on the idea that if nations pass legislative laws, it'll solve the problems of society.